This is Pignilum pecky, the bleeding tooth mushroom. You can see it's oozing this sort of resin from the tubes uh, throughout the body, the fruiting body of the mushroom. Uh, you can see down here are some older ones that have turned to spore. Just a tremendous amount of spore. Pretty cool. It's a shit shroom. Smells like donkey balls. The uh, slimy brown top literally smells like a cross between rotting meat and uh, shit. Another beautiful yet disgusting stink horn. We were walking to town and I noticed this massive stink horn attached here. Pretty incredible kind of a lattice looking fungus and here is an egg that has not yet hatched. A new find for us, this is the first uh, morel that I've ever seen in Ecuador. I'd heard rumors, but now we know for sure. Here's a beautiful Marcella growing in the Andes Mountains near Vilcabamba, Ecuador. The other day I randomly came into the woods here and I discovered a relatively rare mushroom not known to exist in Ecuador, Psilocybe cyrilesin, the landslide mushroom, the one consumed by the Mayans and the Incas and the Mesoamerican indigenous. As you can see, they are just everywhere under this brush. Tons and tons of fruiting bodies. Just completely insane the quantities of these guys. We were out here for several hours yesterday. We've been out here for maybe an hour today and they just keep, they just keep coming. But just to give you guys an idea of what these subtropical panelist fields are like, mind you these are very, very potent up to 2% almost uh, psilocybin. A lot of people say it's their favorite in terms of the effect, and I would agree. You're gonna notice the black spores are very heavy sporing mushroom, so you'll see a lot of the spore. Uh, and I'm just gonna walk for a few feet and see if, oh, look at that. What is that? And maybe a, almost a half ounce dry. And here is another cluster. And this is pretty much how this is going to go for the entirety of this field here. In fact, there's some more. Um, and this is our, our scenery. Gorgeous. Some of these are a bit past the prime, but these are the Panelus cyanescent tropicalis from a sort of white, off-white to tan color. So check this out you guys these are so big I mean this the smaller one the smaller one even is the smallest one in my hand is like an average size that's a large one uh, at the towards my palm these we thought were cubenzies until I flipped them over and realized they're gigantic panelists so we'll definitely be spore printing and I'm actually gonna remove some of the mycelium and take it home with us this is one of the bags that we use for uh, collecting pan cyans I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this, but those are blue psilocybin stains uh, all over the bottom of this bag. The other one is so dark that they, they've just kind of turned black. So here is a Pinellas cyanescin on the left, and on the right is a Synctilus. Synctilus is the most common and widespread of all of the psilocybin-containing mushrooms. Um, 
So, you know, people are always asking me what they can find and no matter where you are, <laughs> if you uh, don't <clears throat> have access to Cyanessens uh, or, you know, Cubensis or uh, any of the more well-known. So, uh, they're a little bit darker. They don't bruise. They have black spores. Um, very, very similar to the pan cyan, except that they're more brown. They often have a band, the darker area around the edge of the cap, and they are extremely common. I usually don't collect them because I've read that they're very weak, but they do uh, apparently retain potency better than um, and have a long shelf life, according to the research that I've done.